Hey guys, the entire show has been building to the Great War that finally arrived in the Season 7 finale. The Night King has brought down the wall, while the most of Westeros on the other hand has agreed to unite and send their forces north to stand a chance against the only enemy that matters. Let's start with first prediction, which is Jon and Daenerys having a baby. In the season 7 finale, we finally saw the two hook up, while Bran's voiceover was explaining that they are in fact related. It's been highlighted numerous times during this season that Daenerys believes she can no longer have children because of a prophecy that was told to her by Miri Mazdur. The prophecy is, when the sun rises in the west and sets in the east, when the seas go dry and the mountains blow in the winds like leaves, when your womb quickens again and you bear a living child, then he will return and not before. Even though Daenerys does believe in this prophecy, as Jon Snow pointed out himself, it may not be entirely true. Additionally, so many people were talking about Daenerys' ability of having children in so many scenes that it seems like Jon and Daenerys having a baby is not even questionable, but was rather foreshadowed. Tyrion talked to Danny about her plan for succession, Danny talked with Jon how her dragons are the only children she'll ever have, and even Jorah talked to Jon about his future child. Just as Jon Snow stated, it's highly possible that the witch was not being honest with Danny, which along with all those foreshadows might mean that the season finale brings more surprisings than we hoped for. The only problem with Danny getting pregnant is another theory that has been floating around for quite some time. If Daenerys truly got pregnant, could she die in childbirth? We know that her mother died giving birth to her, Jon's mother also died giving birth to him, which puts Daenerys in pretty dangerous situation. Let's continue with a prediction that will almost surely come true, which is a huge fight between Daenerys' remaining dragons and the Night King's reanimated dragon. Once the supreme leader of the White Walkers placed his hand on Viserion's corpse and basically raised him from the death to act as his minion, it became quite certain that the final season will contain some epic fights between the dragons. This will most probably eventually resolve with the final death of Viserion, which might have been foreshadowed back in the first season. Let's firstly say that the Night King reanimated the corpse of the fallen Viserion, which makes the Ice Dragon a white that can be destroyed by either Dragonglass or more importantly for this theory by fire. Let me also remind you that Viserion is named after Daenerys' brother Viserys, and Drogon on the other hand is named after Daenerys' late husband, Khal Drogo. Back in the first season, Viserys threatened Daenerys, which resulted with Drogo killing him by dumping molten gold onto his head. It's quite a popular theory that Dragon named after Viserys will get his own version of the Golden Crown in the last season by the Dragon named after Drogo. Let's move on another prediction which has actually been confirmed. It's the Golden Company's arrival on Westeros and their conquest over it. In the season finale, Cersei revealed to Jaime that Euron Greyjoy only pretended to be heading back to Pike out of fear when he has actually sailed to Essos to hire the Golden Company and to bring them with his Iron Fleet to Westeros to serve under Cersei's commands. This is not coming as a huge surprise, since in the fourth episode of the season, Cersei revealed her intentions to take out a new loan from the Iron Bank to hire the Golden Company to expand her armies. This sellsword company is one of the largest and most skilled mercenary organizations there is, consisting of 20,000 infantry, cavalry and war elephants. With their help, Cersei will take the advantage of the war between the living and the dead and will most certainly retrieve some things that, in her opinion, belong to her. Those things, says Cersei, has also revealed herself include the lands that are currently taken away from her. Basically, while the living are fighting the dead, Cersei will try to, as she calls it, retrieve kingdoms that belong to her with the mercenary organization. With the arrival of the Golden Company, there comes another prediction, which is the return of Daria Naharis. Several months ago, I brought you a theory in which Daria will reappear in the last season as either Danny's savior or Danny's enemy. Daenerys' last command to Daria and his sellsword company was to enforce the Queen's peace in the Bay of Dragons for a few months until people choose their rulers. The Second Sons are known for their loyalty, and once they accept a contract from one side of a conflict, they cannot break it and switch to the other side, since they would be seen as unreliable and no one would hire them again. It's almost safe to say that Dario obeyed Danny's commands, but what takes place after that? Dario fulfilled Danny's orders and is now free from any contract, which makes a certain possibility that he and his company will be hired to support Cersei's campaign over Vesseros. Another prediction that will most certainly come true is Jon and Daenerys learning the truth about Jon's lineage. The season 7 finale confirmed that Jon is not the bastard, but rather a true-born son of Rhaegar Targaryen and Lyanna Stark, whose name is Aegon Targaryen. He is the true heir to the Iron Throne and, more importantly, he is Daenerys' nephew. Jon and Danny are heading to Winterfell where Samuel and Bran are waiting for Jon to finally reveal him the truth. It's safe to say that Jon will finally reunite with Bran and Arya, but he will also find out the truth. Jon and Daenerys will without a doubt learn of their family ties in the season finale, but a bit too late. For quite some time, fans have been wondering which house will Jon represent once Bran and Sam reveal to him his true parentage. 
This question might have been answered by John himself in the season finale. While having a conversation with Theon, John remarked that even though Theon's real father was Balon, Ned was more of a father to him than Balon ever was. John said, you don't need to choose, you're a Greyjoy and you're a Stark. This pretty much explains that John will accept the fact that he's a Targaryen, but he will always be a Stark as well. The King in the North might have bent the knee to the Dragon Queen, but once those two learn the truth, Daenerys will most probably be the one to support Jon's claim to the Iron Throne. Next, and by far one of the best predictions you'll have a chance to hear includes Cersei's death, Clegane Bowl and reappearance of Jock and Hagar. The season 7 finale provided us many reunions, but none of them was as interesting as a reunion that occurred between Clegane brothers. A long-anticipated duel between the Mountain and the Hound, often referred to by fans as Clegane Bowl, has seemingly been set for the final season. In this theory, Clegane Bowl will take place a few moments after the death of Cersei Lannister. Upon realizing that they invested in wrong ruler, as Cersei might cause the fall of Westeros since she's not supporting the living side, the Iron Bank would hire the Faceless Man to put an end to Cersei's madness. This is when Jaqen would sneak into Winterfell disguised as Northerner and would reunite with Arya. Jaqen would then say to Arya that the Many-Faced God requires another death. Arya, shocked and surprised, would most likely say that she is not no one, but rather Arya Stark of Winterfell pointing out that she is not assassin and does not play to obey any order, nor to kill anyone for the Many-Faced God. Jaqen would then reveal the name of a person whose death is required, the Queen of the Seven Kingdoms, Cersei Lannister, who betrayed the Living Side and is conquering the Seven Kingdoms while the Great War rages. Arya Stark already wanted to head to the capital and execute Cersei Lannister in the very beginning of the season 7, which means that she would most likely accept this offer in order not only to cross off possibly the biggest name on her list, but also to kill the only person who betrayed the living side. Sandor Clegane, who will in the very first episode of the final season arrive at Winterfell with everyone else, would decide to help Arya since with the mountain on her way, Arya will not be able to kill Cersei or on the other hand survive upon killing Cersei. Once they sneak into the Red Keep, the two would go straight into Cersei's chambers. Arya wearing Kyburn's face would kill Cersei and just when the Mountain would draw his sword to kill her, foreshadow Clegane Bowl would take place. The Hound would fulfill his promise that he gave to the Mountain in the season 7 finale, it's not how it ends for you, brother. You know who's coming for you, you've always known. Let's continue with a prediction regarding the Greyjoys. Yara's intention to become the Queen of the Iron Islands was sung by her uncle Euron. Yara was last seen tied to Euron's horse and being dragged through the streets of King's Landing all the way to the Red Keep. Upon finding out from Euron that Yara is still alive, Theon rallied the remaining Ironborn left in Dragonstone and formed a rescue party so he could at least try to save Yara. But will Theon manage to even come close to Yara and if he does, will he find Yara alive or rather her corpse remains unknown? Taking into account that Euron is sailing to Essos with his entire Iron Fleet to bring the Golden Company to Cersei, Theon might manage to save Yara if she remained imprisoned on the Iron Islands. The next prediction is the return of the death of Melisandre. Earlier in the season 7, Melisandre and Varys had an interesting meeting. Melisandre revealed that she was just about to depart for Volantis, but also stated that she must return to Westeros once more to face her end, just like Varys will face it soon. Let me now introduce you with a prediction regarding both her reappearance and her death. Let's start with the last sentence Melisandre said to Jon. You know the great war is still to come. You know the army of the dead will be upon us soon. And you know I can help you win that war. Once Melisandre returns to Westeros, she most certainly will not remain south, but will go north where the great war between the living and the dead is taking place. Taking into consideration the fact that Melisandre has been exiled from the north, Melisandre might reappear at Winterfell in her true form. Melisandre will take off her necklace, along with her beauty and youth with it, and would once again reveal her true form, which is a frail old woman who is approximately 400 years old. Melisandre in her true form would return to Winterfell, since no one has ever seen her true form, no one actually knows how she really looks like. Back in the third season, Melisandre prophesied to Arya that they will meet again one day, which might go in favor to this prediction regarding Melisandre's reappearance. There are a couple of possibilities regarding Melisandre's death, such as Melisandre having to reveal who she actually is to Jon Snow in order to convince him into her new prophecies, which would lead to her death, since Jon promised her that if she is to return to the North, he will have her hanged as a murderer. Another possibility is a prophesied meeting between Melisandre herself and Arya, which might lead to Melisandre's death. We know that Arya is dedicated on decreasing the names on her kill list, and we also know that Melisandre's name is on that list. Considering all those facts, Arya killing Melisandre most certainly doesn't seem to be out of the realm of possibilities. 
In conclusion, six remaining episodes of Game of Thrones will surely contain huge surprises, twists and some epic battles between the living and the dead. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, if you did, please make sure to subscribe to our channel and I hope to see you in the next one. Peace!